Well, I am ready to get started if you are. We've got awesome. a nice group here right now. So welcome, welcome. We are talking today with Alex Rosen from Brand Ops on how to increase marketing impact using AI-powered insights. And as someone that has worked for brands, for, marketer, for marketing agencies um, over the course of my career, when I saw this at the beginning, I was like, where was this my whole career? So I'm very, very excited to, to get through this today. So Alex, if you could go to the next slide, I'd like to introduce the two of us. Uh, my name is Kathy McPhillips. I am the Chief Growth Officer here at the Marketing AI Institute. You may have seen me on our Intro to AI courses, and I also am behind the scenes on all of our webinars. So today I'm doing double duty. I'm with you, Alex. I'm also watching the chat, and we'll get to the Q&A in a little while. Um, and Alex is the Chief Customer Officer at Brand Ops, and he leads an amazing team of, you know, he knows the tech side, he knows the marketing side, so you're the perfect person to relate all the things you're doing to this audience of marketers that we have. In just a few minutes on the agency, or the Marketing AI Institute, we work to make AI approachable and actionable for marketers. We um, are born from an agency that has now converted into another business, the Marketing AI Institute. We have white papers, eBooks, research, webinars. We're a media company. We've also got a great in-person event coming up in July. I'll tell you about in a second. So if you need resources, mostly everything we have is free on our website. We've got a few um, paid options, but there's tons you can find for free, including our state of marketing and sales AI report, Paul and Mike wrote a book last June, the published last June, and check out our website. The link is there below. And then this is one of our webinars. We have webinars roughly once a month, and we watch, we do them all live, and we also put them here in our, on our webinar page on our website. If you miss it, you can go and get the recording, and you can find those on that link, or you can go to our website in the drop down under resources. There um, is a webinar tab. So I'm ready to jump in. So Alex, I think I'm just going to, oh, one more thing, Maycon. Our Maycon <laughs> event is coming yeah. up in, at the end of July. Um, our discount, our pricing right now ends tomorrow and webinar 100 saves an extra $100. So now would be a great time. I feel like we're going to actually sell out this year, which is really exciting after the past few years of events. Um, and we're really working on this event this year to help marketers explore the different technologies out there, experience this all together and engage with these, the presentations with our speakers and with the community. So if you have more questions, visit the website, reach out to me and that's it. So Alex, it's all you. I'm going to stay on camera and just maybe just interject here and there as you're going sure. through it, but I'm going to go on mute and let you take it from here. That was, that was your Steve Jobs one more thing slide, right? Yep. The, sorry. Sorry, sorry about last. that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> Great. So uh, thanks for the intro, Kathy. Thank you to you all for your interest and for your attendance here today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you first just a little bit about brand ops and then go through the agenda and we'll get rocking and rolling. Um, so the company brand ops has been around for a few years. We started doing uh, research and development around natural language understanding before it was cool, um, before it exploded, and uh, took some of that technology and other AI and applied it into uh, marketing use cases in 2020, and then built the and launched the platform in um, 2021. And today it provides the most complete view of marketing performance, and you'll see uh, during uh, the presentation why I make that claim. So. Um, what we do and what, what we'll do today is uh, talk about what's needed to set marketing strategies. So I'll raise some questions. I'll start with what kind of where brand ops started and then a broader set of questions. Then I'll jump into uh, brand ops demo. So you can see what, what it really does, how it, what it looks like. And there's AI uh, inside of brand ops. It's not going to scream AI. So after that, I want to show you what you where the AI is and what you saw. So we'll talk about the AI that we've been doing before GPT, what we've been doing in the five months since uh, Chat GPT was announced, um, and how we can use what's inside Brand Ops to increase the impact of the generative AI that you're using, and probably what got your uh, interest here today, and then. Really exciting is what does the future of marketing analytics look like in a, a GPT world and, and how does brand ops fit into that? So that's the agenda. Um, 
Before, so Alex, just yeah. real quick, you know, for those of the uh, attendees, I know many familiar faces have attended these AI in action webinars before. This is not a demo, but having Alex jump into the technology and show you a behind the scenes and show you how it works really is the best way for us to learn how this works. So while it is a demo-ish, it really is more about the whys and the what's versus um, you know, a hardcore sell. So um, just expect to see, you know, that that 15 minutes or 10 minutes of diving into the platform is going to be, I think, the best part of this. I'm excited to see it. I'll cruise through it quickly. And, no, don't, uh, no, don't cruise. No need to cruise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, actually, sorry, uh, skip the slide. I wanted to uh, touch on this to just get you thinking about it because um, we are looking for people who are very interested in this area to apply for early access for some plugins that uh, we have, are creating around brand analytics and, and content generation. So I just wanted, as you go through this, just think, hey, is this me? Does, is this something that I'd like to uh, reach out to Alex about? You've got the info there. I'll show it again at the end. And then as you see what we do, um, we would love to have people, especially if you're like an agency on the agency side and you're working with customers, or if you just uh, really are, you know, want to fully understand how to use this platform, uh, become certified in our foundation for brand analytics and what's coming soon with our marketing GPT specialist uh, certification. So you'll you'll better understand that. I'll I'll come back to it, but I just wanted you to uh, get a heads up that these things. Uh, are out there and please uh, start thinking about whether this might be you. Um, so I'm gonna start with where we started, which is um, thinking about the ways that um, brand measurement and branding has changed and how uh, people assess brands. And I'm gonna do it the two sides here, right? It's because things really changed quite a bit as we moved to a more online world, right? It used to be buyers would just, you know, have an impression of a brand when they were ready to uh, buy something, they would, you know, think about what their memory is. But now the impression of the brand, it comes so much more from how they experience the brand in the digital space. Is it easy to find? Did they stumble upon it on social? You know, what do they see or hear about in videos and podcasts? That's what branding, you know, brand building has become be, you know, in the digital space. And it's the way that uh, uh, we think need to think about how do we measure a brand? So the old way marketers would use is, let me send a survey, let me send another one six months later, let me see if our awareness grew, you know, but not have a lot of understanding of what's moving the needle, what actions to take. A more modern marketer who understands how branding works in the digital world, it wants to do continuous analysis of their brand across channels, um, linked to their goals, taking into account what's happening with the competitors, and then add in what they can learn from surveys. And so that was the foundational kind of motivation for brand ops. How can we serve those modern marketers who want to understand what's happening with their brand and what exactly to do to grow it? Okay. But the things on the brand ops side kind of expanded as we built the platform and talked to CMOs and demand gen leaders. And we recognized like they wanted to answer bigger questions and we could provide them with the answers about not just brand health, but marketing health overall and how to improve performance, which actions should they take, you know, when they're thinking about their, uh, you know, their strategy and their budget, uh, what should they do? What's going on with the competitors and what can we learn from them? And you know, what is the bar that the competitors have set for us that we need to consider when we set goals for our team? And then the brand focus questions around what's the real impact of these things that we do at the upper funnel? Do they really drive revenue? Are we, you know, that continuous brand measurement, are we growing awareness and interest? And then, you know, all these, this whole concept of people active across channels, well, you know, when we do, when we invest in one channel, how does it affect others? So the, those types of relationships, they want to understand so they can set the right strategy. So those are key questions that we help answer. 
And you know, the reason that they've been difficult to answer, one reason is that the data has been scattered um, across different teams who are using different tools, and they're just kind of focusing on optimizing in their particular area. And leadership doesn't have a, a holistic view that they can make sense of and make strategic decisions about where to invest, where to focus, what you know, what really needs to improve. Another uh, hindrance to answering the questions is that most marketing measurement is done through attribution data. And that can be misleading because it doesn't generally, it overemphasizes what happens at the bottom of the funnel and it doesn't have any understanding of what's happening with competitors. So you're, you have big blind spots and you can't answer those essential questions. So those are uh, big problems. So our platform solves them by doing what we call full funnel listening, unifying data across the funnel and channels and the competitive landscape, watching what's happening out there, bringing it together, using AI and uh, data science to analyze it, to understand, you know, what do I need to do? Where do I need to focus throughout the funnel to, uh, you know, to win in my category? And then have enough detail to set the right goals, um, you know, to achieve big objectives and to align the team quarter by quarter on how can we improve, how can we keep, you know, if we're in the lead, that's great, but if we're not, what do we need to do to get there? So that's what the platform is all about. I'm going to just click in one more level to give you an understanding of the channels that we cover, you know, all the channels where the brand is experienced in the digital space, social reviews, you know, webinars like we're doing here, um, blogs, um, and it's watching that all the time analyzing it, giving you insights that you can't get from a, you know, these more narrow tools, having the data to set the right goals and tracking those goals and understanding the impact so you can create the right strategy. And then what you need uh, after that is like, okay, I set the right goals because I know we got to, you know, we got to do better here. How do we do better? But now you have all the content um, to, to learn about what engages the audience so that you can you know, in, increase your impact. So that's, that's the platform and I would love to show it to you. Are you ready to see it? So Alex, I have two questions for you. Yes. One, you, know, you showed a few slides ago, the integrations. That yes. was just a small sample of your integrations, correct? There were, I believe there were others on your website? Um, yeah, so we, we cover, the key thing is, that we're looking at what's happening across these channels. And from an integration point of view, we can integrate with your MarTech stack, things like Google Ads, Google Analytics, HubSpot, uh, Marketo, those types of things to get kind of your insights. But for the other data, we're uh, crawling sites, uh, using APIs, uh, you know, doing a bunch of different techniques to pull in what's happening across all these channels, not just for your brand, but for competitors. Okay. And then real quick, Jennifer's asking, what was what's the backbone of the platform? Assuming there are some customization possibilities, I'd like to know if we already staff people with these skills. Um, so the platform is actually, you don't need skills to set anything up. It's all, this is all pre-integrated. We do all the setup for you. Uh, really, you just become a user and uh, learn how to uh, you know, get the, the insights and then uh, set up the actions that you want to take so we can track those. And you'll see that in the demo real quick. We'll walk through that. Anything else? Yeah, so she's saying, so we just have to configure accounts, account information, and then it runs and then run with it. You actually don't even have to do that. You tell us who your competitors are. You you pick the competitors to monitor as well as your brand. And we can monitor corporate brands or product brands underneath uh, the corporate umbrellas. Um, and you just tell us which ones to turn on and we do all the work for it for you. Yep. All right. Well, let's take a look. Awesome. Great questions. Okay. I've got a Pull that back and we're good. Okay. So this is inside brand ops. I am um, looking at a demo category that we have. 
for a type of software called robotic process automation. It's just a B2B category. Um, and in this environment, we're monitoring eight brands in this category. You might work in a business that has products in different categories. We can actually manage that multiple categories, no issue. Um, now, what the what I'm looking at here is an overview screen to get the big picture of what's happening. I'll show you a few different uh, ways that we do that. Um, but this one gives us an overall score for the brand. And that score is composed of what's happening across four different pillars. So we have a, a presence pillar where we're looking at all of the signals that indicate the, the activity of the brand, the presence of the brand. Are they active on social? How do they show up on search? You know, all this stuff across channels, um, we compare it to some best practice benchmarks and determine a score for each brand. So if you're the CMO of Automation Anywhere, you can see, okay, I'm looking like I'm second on presence. But then when I look at the attention signals, where we're looking at things like follower counts, engagements, video views, you know, are they outside share, getting an outside share of mentions, all those types of things. Oh, I've got an issue on attention. Um, it's, you know, it's below my presence health and it's well below um, the leader in the category. We can look at reputation where we are pulling in signals from review sites, that's product review sites, employer review sites, and then social sentiment. And then momentum, which is looking at the, the rate of change of these things over time. All those pillars come together into your overall score. So you can, at a glance, get an understanding of, you know, how do I stack up and where should I focus? Usually you want to, you know, get your presence healthy and then make sure that that presence is getting an appropriate level of attention and always have a strong reputation so that you don't block buyers when they actually uh, start to get interested in your offerings. So that's that's one um, quick view. Another way we break it down and have same kind of scores against best practice benchmarks is channel by channel. So I can understand again, my health versus competitors, where do I need to focus? Where's an opportunity? Like maybe we can do more on podcasts. Maybe I should go congratulate the customer marketing team for keeping us strong on the product review sites. You know, um, you know, is there an opportunity on video? So channel by channel assessment, again, to identify from all the data that we have where to focus. Um, and one last way that I'll show to do that is with a share of everything. So marketers like to understand their, their share of voice. But that's like a very limited, like maybe it's just news mentions or some measure of ads. What if you could look at share of everything of, of the digital signals across channels and understand where you're at? So typically we will work with customers to get their, their scores up and then to get to this point where you become very dominant on share in all the places that matter, like these earned metrics or these owned metrics and the paid metrics, right? So you have all that data to work with to help you um, achieve the goals. Um, and I'll just drill in one more time, uh, kind of on a uh, analytics view, which is if I wanted to uh, dig into any of those scores that we saw, this is an example of, I can look at the score, I can look at it versus any of the competitors, I can get some recommendations that about how to improve the score, I can see the trend over any period, and then I can do things like look at my metrics versus any competitor on the list and see side by side, what do we need to do? What would be the right goals to set? Then I can set those goals for my team. I can come here and say, hey, you know, we're doing pretty well on search, but let's keep that up. That's important to us. We're getting a lot of, you know, revenue out of that. We don't want to let it go. Uh, our reputation needs improvement in a few places. So I've set some goals for, you know, reviews. Um, and, you know, brand ops is scoring across all social channels. I only care about LinkedIn and Instagram. So I've set specific goals for the team to grow there. So we can track that automatically. We can even put assign people to it and watch the leaderboard to see how everybody's doing and, and hitting the big objectives that we have for the team for a particular quarter. 
So, so Alex, you know, yeah, go ahead. When you go back to the competition, you know, mm -hmm. one, how does that data come in? And you, I mean, if you, I know you talked about it, but could you just explain that a little bit further? And then my other question is, should we as brands be worried about our cust our competitors having access to our data within your platform? No, you don't. Your data is your private data. So the competitive landscape is data that we can get for all brands. Um, then we have data that we just have for your brand. That is not shared in detail, but we do use it for um, broad benchmarking mm -hmm. um, purposes. You, you, you know, you have to agree, but yeah, we uh, we run a benchmarking program to uh, help all marketers uh, understand what good looks like. And what are the sources for those benchmarks? Um, so the sources for this data it really varies by channel. So you know. Uh, I'll show you some LinkedIn data and we're crawling LinkedIn. I'll show you some search data. We have, we use a API to do, to run, um, so, uh, you know, tons of search queries. Um, you know, it just, it varies. And that's kind of like on our back end. that's what, that's the engineering work that we've done. And then, and I'll talk more about this when we come back to the slides, we use AI to make sense of a lot of that data to identify brand names, sentiment, things like that, to uh, to get to this point where you have a easy to understand view of how you compare. And then the score itself, the score is based out of 100 and the score, it it, it's yeah. not an index. It is based out of 100, that is correct. Okay, and then your, and then your engineers determine what, you know, what points you need to be at to get your score to a, you know, to a higher level. Yeah, you'll see the brand ops goals. The brand ops goals uh, are defined by audience size. So we have three audience sizes, like, you know, very large for uh, B2C brands and then kind of a small audience for more niche B2B. And then, you know, this is a medium audience because it's, a, it, you know, it's determined by how many people you're really trying to reach. And then it's like, what does good look like? What does best practice look like on each of these metrics? And you know, we did a bunch of analysis to come up with those numbers. And if you don't like our numbers, that's okay because you can do what I just showed of setting your own um, objectives with your own goals and your own weighting. So you can use our data and this objective system to measure you know, what you're trying to achieve. We have back here, this is a standardized measurement um, that we use we only differentiate by audience size. So if you're an enterprise or you're you know, um, mid-market and you're comparing yourself to an enterprise com competitor, it mm -hmm. level sets it based on your audience size. Yeah, so we have Microsoft Power Automate in here. So we definitely, um, this is another place where AI is coming in to filter out the content that Microsoft publishes that is about this particular product brand. So you can get an understanding of head to head. And it's not just when they mention Power Automate, it's when they mention a series of things that relate to this topic, we identify those and count them as, okay, they're promoting this area or, you know, or not and filter that out. So you get a clear view. Got it. Great questions. Um, should I carry on? Yeah, please do. Okay, cool. I want to show, uh, so so we we were at the objectives. I set, you know, I'm CMO. I'm like, hey, I was talking through, I set some objectives. Now I want to get to like, what do I have to do to achieve those objectives? And uh, I introduce you here to something inside Brand Ops where you can see a marketing calendar. And this is laying out, you know, all the activity, the owned activity for a brand. And I'm looking at the brand that I'm, acting as right now, but I can see this for the leading brand as well. I can see, you know, when do they put things out? What channels are they active on? You know, oh, okay, they put out a press release here. You know, they're doing this on YouTube. They're, you know, everything, including like updating their homepage. I can see all that, you know, it's a little box here, but I can flip over to my agenda view and see, just scroll through the messages that they're putting out to what audiences, on which channels. And I'm gonna show you how we have more detail on this, but if you just wanna kind of skim through and stay up with what's happening in the you know, key competitors, 
you got a you got easy path to do that. And a lot of marketers are doing this content, you know, this message analysis, um, and they're doing it manually across channels, and that's just so much pain. You can just you know eliminate all that uh, extra effort with when you have this. Um, so I'm gonna jump into some of the channels real quick, just to because these details are actually gonna uh, feel be, become more important as we talk more about the AI stuff in the slides when I return to them. Um, but I just want you to see like uh, the type of detail that's in here uh, that can then be used for analysis. So things like what's happening with search, but it's not just a you know kind of overview month to month of performance. It's we're, we uh, expose all the details. So we're doing weekly organic searches, and then we're doing uh, 30 to 40 times a week. We're looking at what's happening on paid on those keywords that we're monitoring. Who's active? What are they saying, right? Um, so, and then we sum it all up for you and make, make sense of it. But that level of detail is super powerful for understanding uh, what's really working in the category. That's on search. I'll flip over to uh, the reviews channel here, and I can see, hey, you know, who's getting the most reviews? Uh, it's the leading brand has the most reviews. Let me just drop in and see um, how they've been doing. Uh, they're always scoring high. They're consistent, right? I see a lot of brands go up for a while. They get a bunch of reviews, then they like wait off six months. If you got the email from G2 a couple of weeks ago, they care more about recency of reviews. So this brand already got that message, right? They're keeping it continuous. Um, and that is, you can actually see they, they just crush our goals here um, on reviews, good for them. And then we can see the places where they're getting the reviews and the actual review content with some highlighted terms that, you know, that we, we can skim through and see what people are saying. Um, and I can drop any of those reviews into a report to do verbatims if you do that kind of work. Now that's much easier. I just flipped over to social. I'm just going to keep going uh, through a couple more channels. But on social, like a lot of people I talk to, it's like, hey, LinkedIn, I can't really understand. Uh, my tools don't give me that visibility into LinkedIn. We give you visibility into post activity, engagement levels for the competitors. Um, you can see what's going on in the category. You can see share of values and trends over time, who's growing those followers. And, you know, this is where you can get into the, you know, what do I have to do to win? Because I can go in to their activity, uh, just like I did in reviews, drill in and see um, not just all their LinkedIn posts, but I can um, sort those posts by reactions and see over this time period, what's really driving that high engagement level. What can I learn from that? How can my team get better? on this platform speaking to the same audience um, and improve our engagement. So that's uh, very interesting stuff around social. Um, can you engage with, within, are your social no. accounts? Okay, no. <laughs> not, not yet. No, not yet. Uh, yeah, we're really focused on the uh, the analytics, understanding what you need to do and then giving you the insights to, to make that happen. And then like YouTube is another channel. So I dropped into MediaCast where we're looking at uh, activity across podcasts, webinars, YouTube. Um, I, I'm just going to, I got it sorted by net new views. This leading brand is getting a ton of views, but well, what, what's working for them, right? A lot, I see a lot of marketers now, they want to do better on YouTube. So you can go here and see, you know, okay, oh, they've been really consistently growing subscribers, high, very high view counts. Um, I can scroll down and again, I can see what's working. This may, oh, it came in quick, thankfully. Um, I can see this video that gets the views. They're driving thousands and thousands of views to that. Sometimes you see so high, it's like, you know that it's it's promoted. Other times you realize, oh, this, this has gone you know viral and it's a message that really works. So you can see all of that data. But again, I want to, uh, you know, beyond the, hey, I, I want you to see how awesome brand ops is. Think about this data in terms of giving it to an intelligence. And we'll talk about that in a second and having all that detail that it can process. Because you know, this we do as good as we can at trying to make it understandable. But as we've seen, 
there's now ways to make all this uh, complexity even more understandable. Are and, there um, date ranges? Are there date limitations on, you know, say you have a new KPI and you want to go back in since you set, set up brand ops, can you go back to the beginning or is it is there certain time frames that you can you can yeah. analyze at once? So for things like view counts, um, they start when we uh, when a client starts. For things like blogs, we can see their blog activity because we go to their RSS feed and pull in all their old activity. So it just depends channel by channel. Um, yeah, uh, it's the scoring starts when you sign up. Um, Got it. And it takes uh, uh, two to three weeks to start for the scores to kind of settle and to start drawing conclusions from them. And just to go back to the, um, to if you're a small business and you, and they don't have competitive data, you are able, if they give you the competitive set, they're able to, you are able to pull the con competitive information for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We actually also can auto identify competitors by what's going on on search and ads. Um, we, we suggest them. It's kind of right now it's to our benefit to have you track more competitors. That's the, the model. Um, but normally, you know who your top competitors are that you're paying attention to, and we'll make that you just tell us, and we'll set them up. Do you are mostly are most of your clients brands, or are there agencies, or is it a mix? It's uh, it's been brands. Um, it's a uh, very powerful for agencies to do a, an audit and to understand you know what where they might have opportunity with clients, but we've primarily focused on. Uh, going directly to the, the, the brands. Love to talk to agencies more about, you know, how we can work together and potentially have a win together and win, you know, win for their client with it. Cool. I was just going to show reports. It's got a little AI feature in it as well. Like uh, pretty much everything that we were looking at can be dropped into a report or you can, you get a full report each month. And from, you can add your notes and we're not doing this yet, but since it's an AI audience, yes, there will be, you know, notes that are generated automatically, but, you know, before GPT, we were already September. making it so that you would have a generated voice present the report. The month, the second, so the you pick out, That's you know, what's really Our important to you. Call. And you send a report, and then people are actually going to view it because now they can, you know, lay back and listen to the analysis, and and everybody get focused. One last uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on is um, is correlations. So because we have this long set of data, this time series data about brands, and because we can get if we hook up to your Google anal Analytics data like views to your pricing page, we can look at the correlations between these top of funnel things like, you know, people following us on social or, you know, how we show up on YouTube, all of these things and how they relate to bottom funnel coming to our pricing page and, you know, showing high intent. So that's like gold for marketers, especially brand marketers who are trying to make the case around you know, this stuff's actually important. So I'm looking at it across brands now, but I could look at it for your specific brand if we had your bottom funnel data. So yeah, so that's those are the screens I wanted to show and then I'll, I'll pop back to, to the slides. Any more questions before I do that? I think we're good to continue. We've got a lot of questions, but um, <laughs> All right. we'll get to those in a bit. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm talking fast. No, <laughs> we're, we're doing great on time. Okay. Good, good. And people um, said, don't rush because it's, this is a, we got to wrap our head around this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about what was going on inside there with AI. So there's a type of AI that's classifying things. And so we're using that uh, before this whole GPT burst on the scene to do things like identify brand names, especially, I, I don't know why people name their brands with common words, um, but they do. Um, so you need to understand, are they what are they actually talking about? So uh, machine learning is good at that. Um, so we get a bunch of content automatically 
uh, about the brand, and then we'll basically label that. We, we have automated automation to do it at a first pass, and then an administrator can go in and uh, add more training snippets when needed, um, train the model to try to get you know as accurate as possible uh, identification of the brand. This can also uh, be done at different layers of a taxonomy. So the product is built to support ferreting out, you know, product brand level information from uh, uh, corporate brand information. Um, and this is just a look at the, the back end. So this is like the training data that we have, and then we label it as, you know, we this is an instance of the company brand. We have a bunch of test uh, examples, and this is how you train a machine learning model to uh, learn what are valid uh, mentions of, of a brand. And that's used across news um, and social and things like that. Um, we also are, are looking across like blogs, news, press releases, classifying what we're seeing in terms of topics. So this is important if you're competing with um, a public company and you're not a public company or your competitors aren't public companies and you are vice versa, you want to kind of filter out that financial news that public companies get. So we use topic classifiers to do that. Um, we also have topic classifiers to help us follow what's happening around a category term, not just a, uh, not just a, um, a brand name. So that's classification. It's also the same kind of ideas used around sentiment analysis. Um, we do a lot in B2B. There isn't a ton of sentiment in B2B. We, we did a lot. Uh, the, you see this, it's amazing in B2C, but it's almost all negative, right? People trashing their airlines, their hospitals. Um, but yeah, we do that. And this, you know, it's not, this technology has been around for a while. It's the pre-GPT AI. We think we do it well. Um, uh, but you know that's that's working behind the scenes to make sure that those scores are as accurate as possible. But I think you're all here because of you know what's new with AI and marketing. And so I'll show you some of the new stuff that's going on. And one piece of that is uh, making AI evaluate things like analyzing a LinkedIn post. And I'll give you a, a more concrete example of that. And so, we're doing this in the background, looking at um, uh, the posts that we're capturing and uh, having GPT assess them for a bunch of different features or characteristics. Do they use humor? You know, is the, uh, was there an event referenced? Um, and what level of emotion was uh, used and what type of emotion? So all of that, and that's going back into the brand ops database to understand what works um, and then to be able to uh, predict engagement levels uh, better than GPT can alone and to you know to help you improve what you're doing. And if you'd like this prompt, it's a pretty cool prompt, uh, email me and I'll send it over to you and you can look at your own posts you know before you send them out. It could be part of your workflow. So Alex, is there a way within your system or is it exportable out of brand ops if I want to, you know, engagement on social is great, but really we want the conversions and this, you know, is there a way to either bring in sales data or export this to put it into your, into your sales so you can see which ones move the needle or is it based UTM based or how, how would you put those two things together? So both, you can bring in um, data from your uh, uh, today, HubSpot and Marketo. So we get like uh, lead data out of there. Um, and then you can do the analysis with brand ops or you can export uh, data. Um, the export is not as it's, you know, there's certain uh, data that you get with the export. If you need more, we can talk about it, but that's actually going to be part of what I'll talk about next, how we're connecting into into systems in new ways. But yes, it's definitely a, important to bring, you know, what you're seeing out in the data that we have um, and how it's impacting uh, result, your business outcomes, your results. 
I feel like this kind of takes away that, you know, we can look at this and anal analyze it to our heart's content. We're like, oh, okay. So these were successful. Was it because it was Tuesday? Was it because of the language? It kind of takes out that element of, of guessing, you know, you know, right now we're just taking our best guesses based on educated guesses and this kind of fine tunes it even further. Yeah. And we think this, like the GPT evaluation of what's going on is much more sophisticated than like typical social tools have had. Um, and so we're, you know, it's been five months since uh, ChatGPT came on the scene. This is one of the things that we've done uh, to leverage that technology for our customers. Um, but let, let's, let's keep going because there's uh, more interesting stuff you can do because <laughs> now um, you're, you know, that was evaluating content that might be human written content and you know it can be a harsh judge of your you know what you put out there um but you know if you want to have machines helping you in generating content you know it becomes more important to give them context uh and they today's uh chat gpt doesn't have that context it kind of just you know tells you hey i'm a, i only know this or i can't do that uh, good luck to you. Um, but uh, this GPT plugin for content generation can provide the context. But before I go there, let me just talk a moment about what plugins are, because the time is doing weird things lately, but it's only been like six weeks or so since um, uh, plugins were announced by OpenAI. And they really uh, change things in a significant way because a uh, big problem when chat GPT came out on the scene was, Hey, it's making up stuff. It's that confident liar. Um, and the reason it does that is it doesn't have the data that it needs uh, to properly answer. So plugins are the way that open AI uh, enables chat GPT to connect to other data systems like your data or brand ops data. Um, and that technology is now, because uh, Bing, Microsoft uses OpenAI, that's getting rolled out into Bing. And we think it's gonna be used by other players in the space to connect you know, data to GPT systems. And so that's why we've got this GPT plugin for content generation that takes that crazy amount of data that I just showed you the, and the wisdom of what works in a category um, and what works more broadly for hero brands and can plug that in to other tools in the MarTech ecosystem that you're using to generate your content. And now you can generate content that doesn't hallucinate, that you know has context about what really works um, and doesn't repeat itself. That's another problem, like it knows what's been done. So super valuable um, capability to connect the dots between these two. I remember the days of not yeah. having enough data and now it's like, we have so much data, where do we even start? And this really seems to help boil it down to what we really need to pay attention to. You're getting, you're getting ahead of me. That's the- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the next slide. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> exciting, it's exciting times. So um, yeah, so you got all this data and you got to develop a strategy. And you can, you know, do what I just showed you in brand ops of looking through and we're using data science to try to figure out, you know, what's important. But, you know, wouldn't it be nice to be able to ask GPT, like, hey, what, you know, what should I do? Where should I invest? Answer those questions. If you remember, I laid out questions at the beginning, important strategic questions that marketers need to answer to improve their marketing health and performance. So we would love to bring that data um, to GPT and have it be able to answer it. But it's not just the, the data that I showed you and all the channels and all the details and what's getting reactions and views and all that. It's the correlation data too, to take what I've traditionally been thought of as, ah, that's just a vanity metric that doesn't have any impact and understand the impact and then you know, give that to a GPT to uh, be able to use when it's answering questions like, you know, hey, over this period of time, which messages are really working? Um, you know, what, what gets the most engagement? What's leading to revenue? 
you know, and, and lay that out for me from most to least so I can, you know, think about what I really want to do. This all is only possible when you bring the data that we just walked through. So apologies for the demo, but you needed to see all the stuff that's there. And now you can plug it in to GPT and start to create prompts that answer questions that, you know, uh, you, you, you're dying to get the answers to, and you have lots of questions. And so, um, you know, with that, I want to encourage you again to reach out to me if you would like to get early access to these things. Um, you know, we would love to have people working with us to make sure that uh, they deliver just what you need. Um, you know, of course, you got to have the brand ops platform, but if you just want to get the brand ops platform, I'm, you know, I'm here. I'd love to talk to you about that. And then if you would like to, you know, learn more, become certified, help your clients, help your company um, with these things, please reach out about that as well. And uh, I think me or Kathy will be sending these slides out. Um, please jump in for those opportunities. And we'll also tell you about uh, another uh, webinar that BrandOps is going to uh, do around seeing what attribution can't see, because uh, you know it's kind of dangerous and misleading if all your strategic decisions are being made with attribution-based measurement. Yes. Yeah. So Alex, if you send me that link before tomorrow morning when I send out the recording and the presentation, I'll include that in everyone's email as well. Gotcha. So get that. Awesome. And, you know, when, when you and I talked a few weeks ago, you know, you were like, I don't want to do this a demo slash, slash pitch. And I'm like, no, show your technology because that just <laughs> helps us understand what, what, what technology is capable of doing. So I think this was super helpful. Awesome. We've got a good amount of questions. So awesome. if okay. you're ready to stop sharing your screen, we can jump yeah. into some of these questions. Let's do it. Make them easy, people, please. All right. Ah, so a few folks have already asked for the prompt. So the best way for them to get that prompt is to email you directly. Yes, please. Yes, okay, please. Alex at brandops.io. So we'll, you'll have that email address in in the email I send you tomorrow morning. So Andrew Bartle, I love your questions. I love that you're all in. So he asked, you know, who is your ICP? It seems like there's so much data in here and who is the right type of customer industry company size for you? Okay, content-led marketing, right? Because we're looking at content channels. Um, you know, probably we, we tend to focus on companies that have marketing teams that are 10 people or more, but we, uh, you know, we're kind of one of those that thrives in that mid-market space right now, um, but we have the capabilities to serve enterprise, you know, all the things that you need to, to look at full portfolios of brands. So the, the ones that, you know, we, so that's the ideal. The ones that we may not fit for are, you know, if you're just doing, you know, TV ads and we're not going to see signal for you, you know, so some B2C companies, that's, that's all the game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or if you're, you know, super tiny, um, you know, we do have discounts for startups under a hundred um, and we do want to serve that audience, but it, 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 that, yeah. So hopefully that answers the question. I, I think it, it did for me. So hopefully it does for Andrew. Um, what about languages and what about countries? Are you able to do things besides here in the U.S. and English? Um, yeah. So we've added some global capabilities in. We did start with U.S. and English. Um, we are gathering news in um, uh, languages around the world now. Um, I uh, don't have the language list for you, but it's a number of them. Um, we also uh, can connect to or expand some of the data we have on uh, from a couple of different providers with, uh, so let, let, me, let me just say, we can support global. Um, by default, we're English and US, um, but we, I will show you the global capabilities if you're interested, yeah. Yeah, so you you gotta start somewhere, right? So then you then you can learn from that and, and expand. So in case you're wondering, Europe and Africa came up as as requests. So add yeah. those to your list. Yeah, we have clients based out of Europe, um, and they're happy. So not yet, not yet clients based out of Africa. Got it. Um, what about titles and meta descriptions for social and SERP SEO? Are you capturing any of that information? Titles and 
metadata for meta, meta descriptions like when you're pulling the social are you pulling any of the other the copy yeah all the copy uh we have all the copy on social all the um and uh for SERP, we have all that just the the results that you would see the the 50 links that come back on a SERP uh, result and all the ads that you would see within. Uh, it, I guess it it goes deeper than uh, the the first page ads as well, and all that is visible. I actually showed it if you go back to the recording um, what the the SERP looks like um, and. We capture and measure the frequency that we found it and the average position and all that factors into the scoring. Okay. Um, are you unique in the in the market? Like, are there any folks, any companies that you are in direct competition with right now? I, I honestly have not seen anything that brings all of this together in one place. I have seen people that were previously news that acquired uh, social, but then they don't have all the other pieces. So you're still kind of stuck. Um, so that's the, yeah, I don't see something as broad as brand ops out there. Great. What about your reports? Can you white label your reports for, for your clients? Um, we don't have that today. It's an interesting question. We have exports. So if you're an agency using Looker or something, you could pull data out of brand ops and drop it into whatever you're using for other reporting. Um, you know, open ears to other requirements. If, if Yeah. Okay, let me keep going. I think you talked about a lot of these. So you, you mentioned the startups. Eve, Eva asked this pretty early on. Um, is that the same process of just reaching out to you to get information on that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And thank you, Jennifer, for dropping in Alex's email address. Takes a village to, to run these webinars. I'm not watching <laughs> that chat because it'll freak me out. So. Oh, it's okay, I am, I am. So Michael asked about early access that you talked about. Is that Does that mean it's not available right now or are you just taking select? We're, um, we're building a wait list for the first people, we're trying to assess where it makes sense to uh, uh, have those first deployments. So we've got uh, plugins built um, uh, that I just need to, uh, we need to go through a little bit more before we roll them out to those first, first players. But yeah, you're the first ones to hear about it because this was, you know, we thought the right opportunity, the right audience to talk about it. We'd love for you, you know, if this is your space, um, let's talk. Awesome. So Karen is asking, oh, hi, Karen, uh, understanding clients develop their own competitor list. Any reason that list could not include non-competitors who are aspirational marketers? Love it. Yes, that's exactly what we do. We call them hero brands. We can set up a separate category. So like when we work with uh, regional hospital chains, they want to compare to like Mayo Health. That's like, you know, hey, we, you know, if we could be like Mayo Clinic, that would be awesome. What are they doing? So then we put them side by side and you can see um, how, how you're doing. And we have some hero brands in the, that you can choose from that you get as access to as a subscriber. You get a, a subset of our hero brands list that we're monitoring already. Great. And Karen also asked, are you able to do any level of preliminary performance assessment in your development process? Wait, I say this again, preliminary. Are you able to do any level of preliminary performance assessment in your development process? I'm not sure what, can you clarify? Like, is that- Yeah, Karen, can you expand on that a little bit? I'm just asking if, if that's in the development of signing on with brand ops. To clarify if clients want to see how they're doing currently. Yeah, um, I mean, if when when we turn it on, they will see within a couple of weeks. So if you're if you're an agency asking that question, you know what I would first off, I you know I can get you into the demo environment and you can understand the system. We can talk about it, and then we can talk about your client, and then maybe we. Uh, talk to them, you know, and show them together 
what this would bring to the table and how you would use it to uh, you know, understand how they can improve. And it's a, it's a pretty low investment uh, to, to get started actually, relative to what most you know, marketing budgets look like. Got it, perfect. Um, she said, thank you, she understands. Yeah. So Andrew is asking, do you support GA4? And then what data is exposed to GPT? Is data exchange done with the GPT privacy setting? Uh, yeah, so we um, we do we actually only support GA4, which soon will be the only thing. Um, and the uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm not the the engineer and tech person on um, you know something about that privacy setting. But we are very much like kind of on the uh, protection corporate side of you know you, how to use GPT. Always been about you know how do you keep the the data private versus sending it over so yeah our our ceo is very up to date with uh their policies and um yeah so i i think you'll be satisfied but i don't have the details right now okay great so there will be a replay of this um natalie just asked and i'll be sending that out either later today or tomorrow morning likely tomorrow morning because i've got a meeting this afternoon um so i want to end with looking into the future a few people have asked about agencies and is, you know, I'm going to, we've been talking about this for a long time, you know, for a few years since I've been at the Institute, it's like the people to follow right now that really understand this are a lot of the tech companies, because a lot of these technologies were created by people who were trying to solve a problem they had when they were in marketing. So stay in touch with Alex, but Alex, the question I have for you is, you know, as you develop this for agencies and you look on bringing on agencies as clients, What's the best way for people just to stay in touch? Should they just stay in touch with you on LinkedIn? Have your email, watch your website, all of the above. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, um, we're going to uh, stay in touch with people who signed up for the webinar with, you know, our updates over time. So, you know, unsubscribe if you don't want them, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll you know, try to keep people informed about what, what we're up to and how this changes. I thought you were asking a broader question about what happens with agencies with this, uh, uh, with this technology, but uh, that's a different. Yeah, I, mean, I think like all of these technologies, we need to learn how to adapt and make sure that we're providing value differently for for our customers. And you know, using this to our advantage versus using it, you know, worrying about well, we we need to worry. We, you know, we're all we all would need to figure out how this fits into our lives and in our agencies. <clears throat> but ultimately, it could be a real big win for us too. Yeah, I, I think you know that's that's what we're doing. You know, next is training people on how to use brand ops and then how to use it with GPT, so that you know you can be that expert that right. knows how to get the answers out of all that data using GPT, feeding prompts to your your clients, um, you know, and or building your own library of of what's the best way to assess all this data and makes, you know, get the right answers. And just being more strategic because you have time to be strategic because you are, have this tech tool to help you do the analysis. You yes, know, it's, it's, true. it's a huge help. It's a huge help. That's so, okay. Well, we are at the top of the hour. So thank you everyone for being here. This was so helpful. I learned a ton. I hope you did too. Again, watch for that email, watch for some follow-up from Alex and we will see everyone soon. Thank, thank you. you so much.